let's come back to the story I, I'm asking about today. Um, I, 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 it's on the front page of the Mail. I think it should be on the front page of every story, I think, of every paper. I think it's extraordinary that the Justice Minister, Mike Freer, he's the MP for Finching Golders Green. He's a Conservative, obviously, in government. Um, and uh, he has said he's going to stand down as an MP. He told Rishi Sunak yesterday because of death threats. Uh, he, he basically, in the wake of the Joe Cox murder, the wake of the David Amos murder. Again, we heard so much more about Joe Cox as a Labour MP. Uh, being stabbed by a right-wing extremist mm -hmm. than we've heard about David Amos, a Conservative uh, MP stabbed by an Islamic extremist. That same Islamic extremist uh, who killed uh, David Amos, uh, Ali Harbour Ali, had also visited Mike Freer's office. Other people have um, have, have made de uh, death threats against him. There was an arson attack last month. He's been advised by police to wear a stab vest mm -hmm. when he attends any public events. Um, and he says he's just not willing to live like this anymore. He's been a very big supporter of Israel in the wake of the uh, 7th of October had attacks. This has prompted a large Jewish constituency in his, uh, uh, in his uh, area. Um, and he feels that he can't, he can no longer remain. To me, this is just a, the latest in a long line of people who are forced out of their jobs, their lives disrupted, living in fear. Um, the Batley Grammar School teacher being the obvious one, but many other MPs facing this as well, um, facing those threats. We've had numerous cases going to the courts of people to be threatening. Nearly always, although there's always this focus on right-wing MPs, nearly always, actually, if you look at the deaths, you look at the actual events, the actual attacks, it is Islamist extremism. We see it on the streets in those, uh, those pro-Palestinian protests. Many of the people on those protests are good people who care about civilians. An awful lot, far too many of the people on those protests are, are people who are supporting a terrorist organisation, Hamas. Um, this is untenable in 21st century Britain that a democratic elected politician of any political hue should have to stand down because he fears for his life. It is. And, and it's, well, it's not just his life, it's his husband's life yep. as well. Um, and you, what's come out of a statement is the impact that it's having on his family. Uh, mm -hmm. and his family life. And, yes, um, Mike put himself into the, the public domain. No one in the public domain should um, suffer the sorts of threats that he's, he has had. But worse still is that his family feels unsettled. And I think part of the fault is the way our politics is going, because you listen to the language that comes out of lots of our politicians, and that's language of hate. Yeah, it's, it's scum. It's, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, 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 the likely, by November, the, um, according to the polls, the likely Deputy Prime Minister of this country refers to people who, who are on the opposite, opposition party as yeah, scum. As scum. Uh, and it, and you politicians and anyone in the public domain needs to look at the language that they're using because if that language can be used as the language of hate, it's stimulating and Here's stirring the thing, these then. sorts of things. After, look, uh, after Sir David Amos was killed, stabbed to death uh, in a constituency, not in a, in, a, in a public building, but in a constituency uh, a, a Appointment, you know, meeting with uh, his local uh, uh, voters, as, as he thought. Um, immediately after that, everything was about oh, making Basildon a city, you know, mm. as if that, you know, great for Basildon, but that was one of his campaigns in tribute to him. But also about online hate and how mm. the abuse of politicians and how everyone had to be nice to each other. I think you could all be as nice as you want. I think the Islamist extremists would still try to make threats and try to kill people who they disagree they with. I don't think. The words that I use on or off air, on Twitter or on air, make any difference to the number of people who will hate me and wish me dead because I support Israel rather than the Hamas terrorists. It might and it might not. Words are important. You know, I remember the old um, saying, sticks and stones will break your bones, but words will never harm you. We'll say that to those that died um, in the uh, attack on the Capitol building after Donald Trump's yeah. words uh, that were coming out. Not that it's been proven that he directly linked to that, but your words are important and, and people listen to them. You only need to stimulate one person who's hovering, will I or won't I go and attack that individual? And they hear this yep. politician saying, you're calling people scum or referring to people in a derogatory way. I think it's more go, what's that's, happening. That's I've enough. got to say, when it, when it comes to, I mean, on right wing hate, it's what's happening online. A lot of these people, yeah. they're not listening to mainstream politicians. They're listening to these small, you know, small, uh, you know, WhatsApp but, groups and Facebook pages. They're, they're, they're not, they're not listening to what your mainstream politicians say. Um, but, but when it comes to Islamist extremists, I'm sorry, this stuff's being preached in, in mosques. This oh, yes. Is, this is all yeah. online as well. It, this, these are, you know, these are, People, if people in this country feel free to walk in through London streets every Saturday afternoon with chanting, chanting for jihad, yeah. um, 
and, 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 and the, some of the placards you see and some of the chants. I'm sorry, why on earth would people think it was a big stretch for people to go to so far? Go I mean, you know, attacks? supporting yeah. a group, Hamas, who, who, have been, who have been telling children in Gaza, literally, the, 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 it's not like what one teacher says, the de paid, paid for by us, funding the UN mm -hmm. uh, agency that's been funding them, the teachers in schools, the actual textbooks, telling children that their, their main aim in life is to kill Jews. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's, that's, that's Hamas's... what we're up against. Well, here's the thing. We talked about mass immigration on the show yesterday. Mm -hmm. These huge big figures. We, you know, we've imported this. Oh, we okay? have. We didn't have an issue with anti-Semitism in this country since the war when we didn't have a large number of people who came from parts of the world where anti-Semitism is the norm. And it is the case in the Arab world that anti-Semitism is the norm. Sorry for saying facts. If it offends you, that is the norm. Um, you know, politically, you know, and, and, you know, ideologically. Okay, we, you know, we, we, we didn't have a situation where, where teachers faced being threatened with being beheaded mm -hmm. for, for the lessons they gave in a school in Batley, where that teacher three years ago last month is actually still been in hiding with his wife mm -hmm. and four children. Now, and barely makes a front page, local Labour MP not even mentioning it. We didn't have a situation where, where we had people living in fear for their lives because of these sort of threats. We have imported this. A lot of the people making these threats are British born and bred. They've come here with their families. So their families came here. They've been raised in this country. And we have allowed this culture to grow up where if you're offended for religious reasons, well, you've got every right to take it out on people because we haven't stood up for our values. We haven't said, no, if you disagree with someone in this country, you start a political party, you campaign, you leaflet, you go out on the streets, you, you talk about it. You don't threaten people because they disagree with your religious views or your political views, and you certainly don't kill them. And we see those threats and everything else across all parts of society. You know, the d local derby game between uh, West Bromwich Albion and Wolverhampton Wanderers had to be stopped because violence started in the, foot in the football fields. There's always been violence in British society between different groupings. You put people in different teams and it seems to be you stab your way or you, sh you, you kill your way or you maim your way out of it. And that's no, something wrong in society. I think football violence is very different because a lot of that is just, it's, it's, it's blokes, it's lads. It's, it's, a lot of the people... It's, but, but I it's, think it's symptomatic of, of where society society is and you know, yes we've imported a lot of the problems ourselves and it's costing you and I a, an awful lot of money you know the uh, security uh, has been upped after Sir David Amos um, uh, murder security has been upped for all MPs and there's a lot of assessments going on they're getting briefings on what the threats are wearing all of stab this, vests all of it and getting I don't want to live in a country where MPs have to wear stab yeah, vests I, do, I don't either but my um, thing is I don't think we should have to up security I don't think that's the solution to the problem you need to you need to take away the threat. Correct. That's the issue. We are allowing Islamist... No, no one is saying that the average Muslim in this country is a threat. Of course not. Average Muslim in this country has the same values, uh, you know, as, as, as you and I would have. There's no way am I in, in, in suggesting It's the small that. elements There's of extreme, small element. extremism. There's a small element, but it's a sizable minority. It is, and, and growing. And it's given, hundreds given... of thousands of people. That's right. It's not a. It's not a few hundred. It's hundreds of thousands of people in this country now share those views. They think that they think that an insult to Prophet Muhammad should earn you a jail sentence. But I'm sorry, no, it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. If you think that, you're living in the wrong country. Mm -hmm. Whether you're born here like I was, go, there are loads of countries where that can be the law. But this isn't one of them. But we are sleepwalking into that. I know so many people, broadcasters, politicians, commentators who edit what they say, mm -hmm. who are careful what they say because of the threats. Now, I'll tell you something. People on the left, they always talk about the threats they face. They're very open about it. I know so many people, Brexiteers, people on the right, have been spike peeking out on these issues, who face daily death threats, who have to have panic buttons mm -hmm. in their homes, but they're told by the police, don't talk about it, don't do it. People have no idea how widespread this risk is. Mm -hmm. And it's in the police, in the military and everything mm. else. You're the PC world in what you can say and what you can't say and being careful not to upset any group yeah. is taking over society. And we need to start to you know, stand up for our values, the values that yeah. have always been there and that you know, have got us to the position of where we are as, as a country. Look